show you how to set up Ableton Live, uh, well, I guess Novation Launchpad uh, MIDI controller device, which controls the program Ableton Live so that you can use it as a uh, sound trigger, uh, essentially soundboard for things like live streaming. So basically the first thing you need to do on Windows is go to this program, right, or go to this website right here. Uh, it's the Global Novation Music Launch slash Launchpad dash mini support download. And what it's going to do is it's going to give you uh, the driver that you're going to need in order to run it. If you haven't done this already, it's just the most important step. You download the Novation driver right here, and it supports all the Novation stuff, all the Novation hardware. So once you've got that, that's installed, and you've installed Ableton Live as well, then you're going to basically just launch Ableton. I'm running Ableton Live 9. And as it comes up, as the program fully launches, you can see that the lights on the launch pad up here light up. So that tells you right off the bat that the drivers are installed correctly, the program's seeing the launch pad, and that it basically doesn't turn on any other way. Like if it's plugged in USB and all that's happening, then you're good. You're golden. It's working. So what the first thing you need to do is tell Ableton where you're storing your sounds. So what you can do is go over here into Categories, and under Places, click Add Folder. And so you just tell it which folder you've stored your sound. Um, and so if you have sounds already, or you're getting them off of YouTube or whatever, there's programs online that'll let you rip YouTube audio into uh, MP3s or whatever, and just make sure you put them all in the same place. In my case, I'm putting them in a folder called Stream Sound. So I have all of my sounds already loaded right here. They just appear in the Stream Sound folder. So, in order to load them in, there's a couple of ways to do it. <clears throat> right now, it's, I clicked that, so it's trying to play it back. Um, but, anyway. Okay, so what you, what you need to do now, if you want to load in a sound, is right here you have these tracks. You have MIDI tracks, you have audio tracks. Now, this is just like kind of the standard for how it starts, uh, the default. Really. So, I'll just make this a little bit bigger so we can clear. So you don't need any MIDI tracks for this. You only need audio tracks. So you can actually just like cut these out. You don't need them. You can just cut or delete those tracks. Uh, they don't matter. And then you can insert audio tracks, as many as you'd like. In this case, because this is an 8x8 grid, you're going to want probably 8 tracks would be my thumb. Um, so the fast way to do this is hit Control-T on the keyboard, and it'll just do it for you. Control-T, Control-T, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, so now that we have eight tracks in here, each track, so essentially like this spot right here, corresponds to the first row. So this grid that I'm looking at, that's highlighted right here, is corresponding entirely to the able to, or to the launch pad. <clears throat> and so what I mean by that, uh, first of all, you don't need most of this stuff. Um, like you don't need most of these, uh, most of this information very much. Like you can mess with it a little bit if you want to, to turn up volume on one track over another. But for the most part, you don't even really need the mixer view um, or these in this I/O view. This is the in inputs outputs view. So you can just go over here to the right. That's I/O. That'll that'll min that'll make it so you just can't see it. It's still there, but you can't see it. And then like you can just minimize all this stuff and get it out of the way, right? So you can just close all that to make it a little bit cleaner for the moment. We're going to come back to that in a second. But so let's say we want to load in a sound, right? Let's just make it um, epic wind sound effects. So you just click it and drag it in, and I'll drag it to the first slot. So now you can see over here in my Ableton that this, this is now lit up and ready. But if I click on the sound itself, I actually need the track view. Okay, so if you just double click it, then you can see the track view very clearly. And this is basically that sound that you just loaded in. If you double click the, uh, the, the epic wind sounds thing you just loaded in, it'll show up down here. So the first thing you want to do, because what it's trying to do when you load it in is synchronize this sample to the, <clears throat> to the, vol to the uh, tempo that's already preset on your Ableton here. So the tempo over here is 98.4.54. 
but we don't care about tempo at all because we just want to essentially play them like they're one shots, quote unquote. So for one shot sounds, you click you click over here on warp because it's our warp is going to try to synchronize, it. but if you don't want to synchronize it, just unclick warp and it'll play back at its typical normal playback value. Okay, so then when I hit this button, it will play back the sound. This sound is a long sound with a bunch of epic wind sound effects. So if you want to mute it, just click the, the next one down, hit the next one down on that row. If you, hit, if you hit that one, then it'll stop playing this. Let's say you just wanted to play this one sound right here. Just that one. And what you could do is you could grab, see back over here, this arrow, and you could gray out everything until it's just that one sound playing, just that one little bit of sound, and then hit play again. And it stops right there. So that's the only bit of the sample that's playing. Um, so that is handy dandy, uh, because that allows you to sort of just grab little pieces. Like I could take the same one, the same sound, and put it on a, in a different place and have a different portion of it selected and play just a different portion of it if I wanted to. Um, but so like that's the basis of it. So once you've gotten it loaded in, and like, once you've loaded in all the sounds that you want to load in, then it'll look something like this. So you see here that this grid up here on the screen is corresponding directly to what's going on down here. Like I have no sample right here, for example, therefore there's a gap right there. Um, and so the thing about the launch pad that's really cool is that you can see there's a blue box surrounding the spot that is actually visible by the launch pad, the blue box. If you'd like to move down, like you've put stuff in down below, then you can scroll to it by using these arrows. So I can scroll the box downward and it will select, uh, it'll select, you know, it'll move that box down so you can see. So if I scroll all the way down, then you have all these gaps at the bottom. Down. All these gaps. And so if I scroll back up to the top, there, it stops at the top. So if I wanted to play back a song, let's say, say I want to play back Yakety Sax, which is right here. You can just hit this button. It'll play back Yakety Sax. If I wanted to stop it, I can hit this button because it's on the same row, but it's blank. So they can only, here's how it works. You can only play one sound at a time per row, but I could play multiples per, uh, I'm sorry, mul mul one sound at a time per column, but multiples per row. So if I could do, for instance, I could play this sound <laughs> and this one at the same time. Those will play together because they're not on the same column. But if you wanted to play something else on this column, say, it'll mute that. You can only play one at a time. So if you want to stop them, you can just hit a blank one. So I always have a blank one available to hit, if that makes sense. Let's take a look at this sound right here, the Nightwish song. So there's something interesting going on on this sound which is that we're using an envelope. Um, so let's see. So for an envelope, you have to have warp on so it can synchronize somehow. But essentially what I'm doing with this envelope, there you can see the envelope clearly, is I'm using it as a fade out tool. So envelopes are more advanced and you may not want to get into them too much. Um, but what it's like, so when I hit this particular sound, here's what it sounds like. And then it fades out. What this red line is, is essentially the volume of the track. It was loud here, it gets quieter there, it slowly fades out until it gets to this point, in which case it fades out significantly at down to nothing. Um, and so you have to have warp on in order to use the envelopes, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's, you know, gonna damage the integrity of the sound. It's just something you have to do. And so like, 
I, I had it that way so that it wouldn't just keep playing forever. I wanted to use it sort of as a sample or, you know, sample part of the song. Once again, I can still pause it anytime I want. And so envelopes are really handy. Um, this one, in order to set up a volume envelope like this, like for fade ins and fade outs, you want to make sure the first part is selected at mixer and the second part is selected at track volume. That way you're controlling what this line does with these settings. Um, and you can make it do all kinds of crazy things, like if you know how to work envelopes, it's one of the principles behind synthesis. And so, <clears throat> let's see. Aside from that, it's pretty straightforward. Um, some samples you're going to load in are going to be louder inherently than others. Like, um, so you can, and sometimes even looking at the, down here at the actual waveform, doesn't even give you a great clue as to how loud it really is. Because some sounds, they just sound louder even if they're at the same decibel level. So like this song, if, when I play it, it's at a certain volume. And then once it kind of kicks in here in a second, you'll hear how loud it really is. Okay, so you can get an idea for the volume that way. But then there's other sounds like this one. That looks much louder. You see how the waveform is wider here? That usually means it's, it's bigger amplitude. It's just, just more volume. But if we play it, it doesn't sound louder. Quite the opposite. I think it sounds quieter. It's just because of the nature of the song. So tinkering with the balance is something that just takes practice and work. Like you have to figure it out. If you wanted to turn a sound down, you could do it over here. This is the actual raw volume of the sound itself. So right now it's at negative 134 decibels. I could turn it down to negative one, you know, negative 4.3 or 4.73. That will affect the volume on the outbound um, and what it gets picked up by the uh, what gets picked up by OBS. But so basically, what's going on here is that the OBS itself is picking up your desktop volume. So what you're really messing with is the how loud it's coming through the desktop volume, which is something you can tinker with with all these little things. Now, if you wanted to affect the track, um, the entire track, so that's like an entire one of these columns is an entire track. You could open up the mixer, which is this little M looking thing right here. And this is the volume of that track. So you could turn these up and down, right? Like see this track right here, significantly quieter. Um, Really, though, it shouldn't be. I'm not actually sure why that happened. That's just a mistake. But for some reason, that track was turned way down. Must have gotten clicked on or something. Um, so. Right. I'm just double checking to make sure they're not ridiculously. Uh, quiet for some reason, but that's basically it. That is the gist of how to do it. Um, I'm sure I missed some things in this video, but uh, yeah, make sure to uh, ask me any you know questions if you have any any more. But that's the basic explanation. So when I'm running this, essentially I have it up and running while I have my you know game going or whatever else and OBS going, but I have it up on a different screen. So if I need to see like where I'm at, I can always just look over here at this box at the blue box surrounding it and see like which spot I'm at on in relationship to the launch pad. Um, one for, one more thing I should mention is that the launch pad has a function to play everything in one row. Um, and that is these arrows over here. So if I was to hit this button, it would play everything here like this. Which obviously, obviously you don't want that. Not for this, not for these purposes. That's really just designed for like live performance. Like you can, you know, bring in samples slowly and then have them all play at once by hitting just one button. So it's handy for that. But uh, yeah, there's not much reason to do it. There's also a mixer view on this thing. You can hit this, and these are all the levels of all your tracks. And that if you can you want to turn something down, you could or turn something up, you could sort of press and then bring it up and bring it down um, just by messing with these buttons. So but I don't mess with these buttons because I want everything to stay where it's at. But it is possible to turn things up and down just using the launch pad with the mixer, mixer view. Go back to session. So this is yeah session. So that's kind of a very simple, very short overview of how it works. Um, we didn't go over a lot of things, but I figured this would be enough to get you started. So thanks a lot. And I will talk to you later, man.